before. It's time for member statements. The member from Nepean Carl. Thank you very much, Speaker. Neighbours Helping Neighbours is the motto of many of the local Ottawa food cupboards, particularly in my community of Nepean and Carleton. And I've always been a proud supporter of our local food cupboards, and never before has it become more important for us as people are choosing between heating their homes and, and putting food on the table. And this is a big concern for many of the food cupboards across Ontario, and that's why at this time of year, Neighbours Helping Neighbours goes a bit further, because at this time of year, when we celebrate Christmas and Hanukkah, just having finished Diwali and Eid, we are focused on the betterment of mankind and protecting the people that, uh, who cannot protect themselves. And that's why I'm urging all Ontario residents to look at their local food cupboard and consider a donation. I know many food cupboards are asking now for financial contributions so that they can get fresh produce and uh, other fresh foods, but they also like to have non-perishable food items, Speaker. But I do urge Ontarians that if they do take that route for non-perishable food items, that they don't give expired food. I uh, recently did a, a food cupboard food raiser uh, in Barhaven for the Barhaven Food Cupboard, and unfortunately, Speaker, uh, a couple hundred pounds of that food was actually expired, and, and it didn't uh, didn't go very far. Um, so at this time of year. Uh, in Nepean Carlton, please support FAMSAC, the Barhaven Food Cupboard, the North Gore Food Cupboard, the Community Food Bank in Manatech, and the Osgood Food Cupboard. These people are doing a, a lot of work with very few resources, and they do need your help. And that's why this Friday I'll be doing another food raiser for the Barhaven Food Cupboard, who unfortunately, after the Christmas parade was cancelled last Sunday, uh, lost an opportunity to uh, raise food, uh, and they were expecting quite a bit. So, with that, Speaker, I urge all Ontario residents uh, to look at their neighbours help their neighbours and join their local food cupboard. Thank, Thank you. you. Member statements. The member from London, Fanshawe. It is my pleasure to rise today and speak about a bill that I am tabling this afternoon to declare the first week of February as Eating Disorder Awareness Week in the province of Ontario. Too many Ontarians are suffering in silence from these potentially fatal disorders, and it's time we begin to shine a light on these fatal mental illnesses and educate the public about them. However, last week, the Ontario Auditor General reported that, quote, the lack of needed services in Ontario between 2011, 2012, and 2015 and 16 resulted in the ministry spending almost $10 million to send 127 youth to the United States to obtain mental health services, primarily for severe eating disorders. As the needed specialty services were not available in Ontario, Today, Dr. Woodside from Toronto General Hospital's Eating Disorder Program told us that $10 million, that $10 million this government spent to send 127 youth to the U.S. for help could have helped more than 500 people suffering from eating disorders right here in Ontario. The chilling fact those numbers prove is that this government is failing families and children. It's time to tackle this problem head on and ensure that our health care system is there for Ontarians when they need it. I also want to recognize the Hope, Hope's Garden Eating Disorder Support and Resource Centre from my hometown of London for the incredible work they do to providing services for free of charge for individuals 18 and older who struggle with disordered eating or have been affected by eating disorder. My hope is that this bill will be a good first step towards healing. We are all going to help. We are here to help people. Thank you. And Thank you, Speaker. Member Stamos, the member from Barrie. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today, I pay tribute to a constituent of mine who passed away on November the 15th at the age of 89. Walter Charles Crothers, or Wally, was born in Barrie and was passionately involved in his community, serving as a long-standing member of Rotary, Probus, and Kerr Masonic Lodge. As an athlete and a sports enthusiast, Wally's contributions led him to become a sports, Barry Sports Hall of Fame inductee. He was a respected businessman, both owning and operating Carruthers Cartage and Carruthers Rental. Wally loved to sing. He belonged to the barbershop group in Barrie for many years, and neighbours at his cottage on Gibson Lake heard him singing merrily as he went visiting from cottage to cottage. He loved jazz and to dance and would often ask Phyllis Rolls, come on, Phyllis, let's go show them how it's done. Wally was a devout Christian. When he was worried that people weren't saying Merry Christmas anymore, he decided to go around delivering Merry Christmas signs to convenience stores. He was surprised and pleased when the, all of the, the convenience store uh, clerks enthusiastically allowed him to display the signs prominently. Wally is one of the people for whom we are changing the election finances rules as he appreciated the democratic process and would always contribute what he could afford. Wally lost his wife of 65 years, Audrey, and is survived by his children, Wendy and Scott, and his grandchildren and great-grandchild. 
Wally was an unsung hero, and we will miss him greatly. Merry Christmas, Wally. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Prince Edward Hastings. Speaker, uh, several years ago, before, in, before being elected to this place, I was at a hockey coaching clinic in Kingston with another guy from Belleville. A couple of weeks ago, Mike Brennan, who I've been friends with since we met at that coaching clinic, saw his neighbor's house burning and sprang into action. At this time of year, Speaker, the Christmas lights out on Blessington Road in Thurlow are one of the real wonders of the season, and it's no surprise that when Mike Brennan stoked the fireplace at his home at 2.40 in the morning a few weeks ago, that's what he thought he saw out of the corner of his eye. It soon became obvious to him that the bungalow of his neighbours on nearby Forsyth Road had gone up in flames. Mike screamed fire to his alert wife to call 911. On his way out the door, she handed him his robe and he ran over to his neighbour's house. When he got there, the garage the garage roof was collapsing and he was worried the whole house was going to come down. One of his neighbours had come out of the window and was on her hands and knees on the ground, and uh, while the other was hanging about halfway out the window. Mike got to him and helped leverage him out of the house. By this point, the bedroom was starting to burn. Temperatures in the home, according to the Belleville Fire Prevention Officer Dave McMullen, would be equivalent to inside of a broiler, he said. Mike even went back in the house to get the family's dog out. Officer McMullen says he intends to nominate Mike for an award from the Ontario Fire Marshal's office. The amazing thing is, it's not the first time that Mike Brennan has rushed into a burning building. Almost two decades ago, while working as a security guard at a Wellington group home that had burst into flames, he entered the burning building, retreated from the smoke, and broke a window to save a man from the fire. If he gets his award from the fire marshal's office, Mr. Speaker, his mantle is going to start to get a little bit crowded. We commend him for his heroism. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements, the member from Hamilton, East Stony Creek. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, 4.6 million Ontarians have diabetes or pre-diabetes. Diabetes contributes to 30 per cent of strokes, 40 per cent of heart attacks, 50 per cent of kidney failures requiring dialysis, and 70 per cent of non-traumatic lower limb amputations. It also is a leading cause of vision loss in Canada. It is so important that we do everything we can to prevent diabetes and to manage it properly. For children with diabetes, a supportive school environment is a critical to keeping them safe and healthy. Proper diabetes management re reduces the risk of life-threatening emergencies, pre prevents or reduces the risk of serious long-term complications, and ensures that students with diabetes are able to learn and fully participate in all school activities. In Ontario, some schools and school boards have policies in place to address the needs of students with diabetes, while others have none. This means that supports vary widely from one school district to the next. As a result, students with diabetes are often put at risk, and many parents are left struggling to find adequate support for children who are unable to self-manage their diabetes. Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, Quebec, British Columbia, and Newfoundland and Labrador all have province-wide policies or guidelines to support children with diabetes. It's time for Ontario to do the same. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements from member from Beaches, East York. Well, thank you, Speaker, and I stand in the House today to speak about Franklin A. Lang, a trooper in the Elgin Regiment of the Canadian Forces, and his great-niece, Megan, who's here today in the gallery. Now, Frank joined the Canadian Forces in 1942, just after he turned 18. He served Canada with pride during the Second World War, the Korean War, and during the Cold War in France. And unfortunately, Frank found life difficult once his service was complete, and he tragically passed away in 1977 at the age of 52, having never married, with no family to call his own. Fast forward many years, and Megan, with a young daughter of her own, began a scrapbook project to teach her about the family's stored military history, which is where she learned about her uncle, great-uncle Frank. She discovered that Frank's war medal had been issued, but never received, and so she worked tirelessly with the Veterans Affairs Canada over many months, eventually having it awarded to her along with his service badge. This was just the beginning of her search for Frank, whom she discovered was buried in an unmarked grave not far from his own parents in St. Thomas. And on October 31st of this year, thanks to her hard work, Megan stood with the family, some of whom she had discovered during her search for Frank as a military marker was placed upon his final resting place. Megan continues her tireless advocacy in this area in the hopes of inspiring others to look into their own soldiers and find their own Uncle Franks. And I'd like to thank her for sharing Frank's story with all of us today and for her advocacy on behalf of all veterans. You are both shining examples of what it means to be Canadian. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements from Lapton Kent. Speaker, earlier this year, the federal Liberal government implemented Bill C-14, which legalized medically assisted suicide across Canada. 
It specifically included a stipulation that health care professionals should not be compelled to provide medical aid in dying if they have conscience objections. But in Ontario, our doctors and other health care providers are being deprived of that protection. Instead, the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Ontario has adopted the Effective Referral Protocol for Medical Aid in Dying, which may force doctors to choose between their profession and their faith, conscience, or commitment to the Hippocratic Oath. This effective referral protocol is globally unprecedented, and it's unnecessary. There are viable alternatives for the provision of effective access that would allow these healthcare professionals to continue to practice with ethical integrity. I want to urge every member of this House to advocate for the rights of doctors and healthcare professionals who may be compelled to perform euthanasia or other procedures or risk losing their license to practice medicine. We need a collaborative process that respects patient, patients' wishes while not infringing on freedom of conscience. I support doctors' conscience rights, and I stand with the thousands of doctors and medical professionals across Ontario who are concerned about this new law. I strongly encourage the Government of Ontario to take action to protect the integrity of our health care system and the rights of Ontario citizens. Thank you. Thank you. Further members, statements the member from Mississauga Streetsville. Thank you very much. Speaker, at least twice a year, we invite our neighbours in Lisgar, Meadowvale and Streetsville to bring their skates to one of our local arenas for a free family skate. Young and old alike get some exercise. I say hello to the mums and dads and try to coax some of the new skaters into enjoying the quintessential Canadian activity of ice skating. On Sunday, December the 4th, at Meadowvale Four Rinks, about 300 people came out to share our pre-Christmas family skate. I spent some time skating with Alan, a little guy whose dad was himself new on skates. Alan is a natural skater, and he took to, uh, to the ice like a duck to water. Folks in western Mississauga now recognize Merlin, our family's 13-year-old pure white cat. Merlin came for a few spins around the rink in my arms and said hello to all the kids who rushed over to pat him. From Andrea and I, and from my office staff, Andre, Monica, Magnolia, and Manraj, who serve families in Lisgar, Meadowvale, and Streetsville, a very Merry Christmas, Joyeux Noël, and a happy, healthy, and fulfilling 2017, as together we celebrate the 150th anniversary of Canada and of Ontario in Confederation. Thank you, Speaker. Wonderful. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Bruce Gray Owen Sound. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. It's a privilege to share good news from my great riding of Bruce Gray Owen Sound. The city of Owen Sound, also known as the Scenic City, has been named as one of the 22 must-visit hockey towns in North America in an online article by Expedia.ca. The Expedia list included six American cities such as Detroit, Pittsburgh and Buffalo, and the remaining 16 are all in Canada. Sadly, Montreal, Ottawa and Toronto, all homes to National Hockey League teams, were passed over. The good news, however, is the article describes Owen Sound as a tiny but mighty. Owen Sound and area is big on pride when it comes to the Owen Sound attack, the article explains. It might be the smallest market team in the Canadian Hockey League, but has the largest percentage of fans attending home games, and the city and every small town, in fact, has excellent outdoor and indoor facilities, and backyard rinks are part of the landscape. In other words, Owen Sound area lives and breathes hockey, the article concludes. The article also says Owen Sound has a long association with hockey, and due to its long winters, cold temperatures, and open water, most residents grew up with skates and sticks. It's a hockey bastion. It's a hockey hotbed, Mr. Speaker. It mentions that the city was honoured to be selected as Rogers' hometown hockey site in 2015 and home to such stars as Harry Lumley, who the Bayshore Community Centre is named after, Cyclone Ter Taylor, Chris Neal from Flesherton, Paul McDermott from Salva Beach, the Owen Sound Mercury's, the Greys, the White Remnant, just goes on and on, Mr. Speaker. My constituents are very honoured to be acknowledged as one of the must-hockey visit towns in North America. I invite all members and all people, in fact, to put consider putting Owen Sound on their Christmas bucket list, visiting a rink in their area or in our great riding of Bruce Gray Owen Sound, and perhaps a Canadian tradition, play a game of shinny over the holidays. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. It's their